Do you know how long it took Pete Sampras to go from two hands to a one-handed backhand? Four years. He took his pounding, but he looked at the ultimate goals. And that's what all of you must accept. The goals, they're down the road. You have to have patience, and you have to have mental discipline to accept that you're willing to give the time and effort to make some adjustment with your game. December 21st, 1999. Todd Reed, 15 years old, going from the two-handed backhand to the one-handed backhand. We're preparing for the future and for his future. Was his two-handed backhand a flop? Was it a disaster? No. But in the long run, it's the feeling of the team, his mom, his dad, and Todd, and myself, that his two-handed backhand had certain flaws and drawbacks. He has a come-forward game. He loves coming to net. He's one of the best we've ever had in the history of the academy. With that in mind, we think and hope we'll add to this boy becoming a true professional. He will have to make less transition to go to the one-handed backhand. He feels very comfortable with it. And above all, he wanted to make this change. Then he asked a question last night. He said, well, Nick, I'm going to Australia to play in a lot of the national championships of Australia. Should we play with the two hands or one hand? And we decided immediately with him saying, I want to do it right now. Not too many people can make a change and go into action as well, but we're going to let him do that as well. How long will it take? I don't think it's going to take that long. His father has an excellent one-handed backhand. He feels very comfortable. He has a lot of speed. He has talent. So we're making the change. We're preparing for the 2000s because this boy will be an all-around player. I feel they have a game comparable to Sam's, be able to do a little bit of everything, no matter what section of the court he's on. We asked a few of our adult campers to participate in our leverage test, and they were sporting enough to agree. Let's see if you can spot the common problems. Our first student has a one-handed backhand. The first thing to catch your eye should be the big bend in the hitting arm. If you look closely, you'll see that the continental grip she's using has the wrist in a weak position as well. With the hitting arm bent, she is unable to produce the extended arm leverage for the forward swing. She must resort to a snapping action from the elbow. Our next student also has a one-handed backhand, but uses an eastern backhand grip. However, she too has developed a chopping from the elbow action for the forward swing as an alternative to using an extended hitting arm. She lacks power as well as the ability to produce topspin effectively. This type of snapping action can often lead to chronic tennis elbow. The next student has a two-handed backhand with grips that call for left-hand dominance. The biggest missing element is that she never prepares the racket head in the backswing to drive the butt of the racket forward. You'll see that the racket head is not positioned down and back so there's no distance for the racket head to travel for acceleration into contact. Her arms are much too stiff and she doesn't use a quick pivoting action of her hips and shoulders to start the forward swing. The end result is a frustrated pusher who dreams of having power someday. And here's another left hand dominant two handed backhand that never drives the butt of the racket towards the ball either, nor does she use a pivoting rotation in her hips and shoulders. and yet another that does not pivot the hips and shoulders or drive the butt of the racket. Our last student has problems that begin with poor control of her body position. She has no foundation as her body constantly adjusts throughout the stroke. As a result, she creates no pivoting action and no leverage. You can see the pattern that's developing of general problems that plague club level play. The solution lies in the ability to use your body and racket to apply leverage throughout the stroke. You must remember, you're not going to get the ballistic backhand overnight. 
What you saw took years and years of practice. Sound techniques, they progressed very slowly, didn't try to conquer the world. And that's the same advice I'm gonna give you. You've got to review the video, one segment of it, go out and practice that. Check your grips, your footwork, your base, your foundation, and perhaps have somebody even video you and take a look at what you look like. It's easy for somebody to say, hey, this is what you're doing. Show me what I'm doing. Let me see what I'm doing. But remember, you can't get to the final ballistic backhand without progression. And I always say, if you do a little bit at a time, it'll stay with you. If you want to reach another level, all parts of your game have to become a little bit more ballistic. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go for outright winners, but you have to step it up and pace the tilt. If you can do that on your whole game plan, your physical condition, your mental outlook, your strokes, your attitude, the opponents will say, what the heck am I playing here? You're playing a person that's full of weapons, and that's what I want to provide for all of you.